pursue gentle and ever-present. Called to serve here, I got to know her a little bit better by visiting her and Elliot at their home last spring. And I quickly learned that in spite of her memory loss, she was a compassionate carer, a deep, a deep and insightful listener. This certainly served her well through her therapeutic career, and it was amazing a gift here for our congregation as well as in her family and among friends. Her caring echoed among us through the years of her absence, just as it echoes here today in the care we extend to one another as we mourn her death. We will miss Sue Rubenstein. Not only will we not forget her, but we will celebrate her life among us by caring for one another as she uniquely showed us how. May it be so. Like this sorrow, between our Sundays there are many many events that occur within our lives, some that do bring our hearts down and others that raise them in joy. As we gather here as a community of faith once again, we honor all of this with a simple ritual. We pour water into our common vessel. Water we have collected through our water communion and from Sonoran rains. This is our common bond. If you have announcements, do you have any announcements for me? Uh, no, there are no announcements today, but I would just like to say that I will miss Susan very much. I'm sure many of us will. She was a joy and gentle and gave so much of herself to so many people who loved her. And my heart goes out to Elliot right now, who can use our support in his time of grief. And we are so fortunate to be such a loving congregation and community. And so we take a stone for the sorrows that we have named, the sorrows still here in our hearts. And another stone for joy, for joy, joy in community, joy in our individual lives, joy that we bring together here, joy more than the sum, far more than the sum of all the sorrows. Our community bond holds all of it the great heights and the deep depths of our individual lives, renewing and giving us strength as a community to live into our aspirations. Our pastoral care committee, of which Michelle is a part, will be adding weekly to this ritual by listening to your joys and your sorrows, the ones you wish to share with all of us. One of the team, usually Tom Bunch, will collect what all that we hear, and then we'll take turns sharing what has been named before we place stones into our communal waters. We would love for each of you to reach out to anyone on the team and let us know what joy or sorrow you would wish to share with our congregation. Our opening song is number 322, Thanks Be For These. Joel will lead us. Please rise in body or in spirit and join your voices together. For these life's holy times, moments of grief, days of delight, try. 
triumph and failure intertwine, shaping our vision of the right. Thanks be for these, for birth and death, life in between with me. Celebrate life's interval. Thanks be for these ennobling art. Images welcome to our sight. Music caressing ear and heart, inviting us to laughter. Thanks be for these who question why, who noble motives do obey, those who know how to live and die, comrades who share this holy way. Thanks be for these we celebrate, Sing and rejoice, our trust declare. Press all our faith into our fate. Bless now the destiny we share. It is a joy to welcome Bob and Barb to share with us their stewardship testimony. Good morning. <laughs> our journey to Unitarian Universalists started with our wedding. Because we were raised with different religious backgrounds, we wanted to have a ceremony for Bob and I and our families that was offici officiated by both a minister and a rabbi. In 1975, this was easier said than done. After being turned down by multiple ministers and rabbis, we finally found a humanist rabbi and a Unitarian minister who agreed to marry us jointly. All went well, except that my family thought that the rabbi was the minister, and Barb's family thought that the Unitarian minister was the rabbi. <laughs> when we started our family with our two sons, Jonathan and Brian, we wanted to give them some religious background and education. That is when we visited the Unitarian of Church of Evanston, and we soon joined in 1985 and have been members of UCE ever since. When we first joined, we pledged what we could at that time, and we increased our pledge each year as the church needs grew and our ability grew. We also contributed to multiple capital campaigns and other fundraising efforts over the years at UCE. When we bought our house in Oro Valley in 2005, we began attending Mountain Vista when we were in town. And then in 2009, we became half-year snowbirds, and soon after became pledging members of MVUU and part of our church community. We happily raised our pledge each year. We also happily contributed to the capital campaign, the kitchen fund, and the sustainability fund. Uh, we also contribute our time and talents, as well as our treasure. Barb is chair of the nominations and recruitment committee uh, and serves on the welcoming and hospitality committees. I've served on the board of trustees and the AV team. When we first started pledging here in MVUU, we did what we imagined that some other snowbirds do. That is, we figured out the total that we wanted to pledge and divided it half for Mountain Vista and half for our UCE church in Evanston. But it's occurred to us that even though we're not here in Tucson half the year, uh, Mountain Vista's expenses continue throughout the year, even if though we're not here. The staff needs to be paid, the utility bills keep coming, and uh, We've changed our pledging as a result to try to give our full fair, 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 
full, fair share pledge both to Mountain Vista and the same amount to our Evanston congregation. So stewardship is an important part of our commitment to Mountain Vista and its success throughout the year. Thank you, thank you. I invite you now to a time of contemplation, of considering and pondering, belonging. On Friday this week, the skies overhead were blustery, beautiful. That whirling, swirling mix of clouds and sunlight soaking raindrops for a minute and then chilly, drying gusts the next. And there was a rainbow. But it still felt right to stay inside and drink warm tea and read a beloved book under that heavy knitted blanket that was handed down to you over generations. And the day reminded me of that seemingly contradictory wisdom about belonging as taught by Maya Angelou. The title of her most famous memoir, which is often a banned book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, approaches that paradox that she carries within her wisdom and brings it to life hers and to ours. The boxes of writer, poet, or civil rights activist nearly don't do justice to her being and who she is. Miss Angelou, her own contained and whole self, she lives among us still past her death in 2014 through her words spoken and written during her 86 years. And so it is that in an interview with Bill Moyers back in 1973, 51 years ago, she spoke in a seemingly contradictory way about belonging. You are only free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place, no place at all. The price is high, the reward is great. These are powerful words by a black woman elder who lived through tumultuous personal and social periods of time. She knew the risk of belonging to no place at all and also belonging to every place in the world. This belonging she describes holds both distance and intimacy, a wandering and a staying the freedom to move and to be still at the same time. And if all of that wasn't paradoxical enough, in her 2004 book, Letter to My Daughter, Miss Angelou wrote of belonging, we feel safest when we go inside ourselves and find home, a place where we belong and maybe the only place we really do. This is different than that belonging out in the world. It's a place, maybe the only place that we belong is here, inside, in the warmth of our hearts. And so which is it? The freedom of belonging nowhere and everywhere, or the safety of belonging to the home of our hearts? Which is it? Well, thankfully, the wisdom of paradox, of seeming inconsistencies, gives us a third option. Paradox tells us that it is neither because it is both. We gain freedom to belong everywhere and nowhere when we first belong to the safety of our own hearts. It is, as Brene Brown, another wise woman, understood of Miss Angelou's words, we confuse belonging with fitting in. But the truth is that belonging is just in our heart. And when we belong to ourselves 
and believe in ourselves above all else, we belong everywhere and nowhere. Think of that. You belong to yourself. The warmth of your own heart's home. And that gives you the safety to risk belonging free in the world. There's a dependence that exists there between that safety and that risk, between your heart and that blustery beauty of our world. And that, that's a lifeline. There is a belonging to yourself, to everywhere and to nowhere, that is freedom to live whole. That is freedom to be you. And so may we know the paradox. Don't worry about understanding it. Don't worry about that seemingly inconsistent, not really a contradiction. Just live in that space between your heart and the world safety and risk, and live and belong. May it be so. In this time of stewardship, when we consider themes for tomorrow, crafted from our many wishes, I want to invite you to a time of meditation, a time to certainly breathe and rest, and if you feel so moved, to listen to four questions or questions that we are asking our entire congregation this month. So first, breathe. Breathe and rest your body. Breathe and rest your mind. Wherever you are, whoever you are, Rest and belong. And allow for these questions among us. Which theme names for you who we are when we are at our best? When Mountain Vista Unitarian Universalist is most alive and engaged and committed. Which theme names for you our positive core, our life-giving center from which our best thinking and contributions emerge?
which theme names our most courageous dreams for the future of this faith community. Which theme names our greatest possibilities for making a spiritual difference in the world? This year, I am 51 years old. Well, thank you. <laughs> Among many things, this means that some still find me to be a kid, and others find me old enough to be their dad. It means that a full night's sleep is in the past, but I can nap just about anywhere. It means that I'm the exact same age as hip-hop music, but I am nowhere near as happening. Or is it I'm near as hip, or I'm near as hopping? I, I really don't know. And it means that I am a card-carrying member of AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, even though I'm not even close to retirement. It means more than ever before in my life, I'm aware of wholeness and I'm aware of belonging. There are boxes, there are many boxes we are all put in, and they're primarily, primarily based on our outward appearances, boxes of age or of skin color or gender presentation or even how much money we have. These boxes are superficial, and they give little information about who we genuinely are, but they give a great deal of information about what's important in our society. And in that way, they're more like cages than they are boxes. Caging people up won't ever tell you who a person is, but it does make them easy to judge. And it makes it very simple to strip away their freedom. So judging me simply by my age, you couldn't possibly know that I love being a part of a multi-generational family. I am a son and I am a father. You wouldn't know that I rest well where and when I can. That I do move to the rhythm of hip-hop and other music that throws a beat. Or that AARP gives amazing discounts. No, they really, really do, right? Really. Caging people doesn't ever tell you what makes their hearts sing. It doesn't ever tell you what makes their hearts sing. And Ms. Angelou writes, the caged bird sings with a fruitful, tr fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. 
And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings for freedom. Without knowing the heart of another person, you cannot possibly witness their wholeness. You cannot discover how you and they belong together, and you can't be free. Now, some of you may have noticed, and it's okay if you didn't, that the title and topic of this Sunday's service has changed. Anybody notice? (laughs) All right, then. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I had originally billed it as stewardship for tomorrow in our newsletter, saying that this Sunday will reflect back on what we are hearing about our themes for tomorrow and focus on the meaning of our shared stewardship here. Now, our Tomorrow team has begun their work, reaching out and contacting you. They've made conversations even, and some have started to report back your answers to those four questions. But it's really a jumble of information that's coming in, like 69.2% of you all say that at our best, We are a a warm and connected community. Some use that exact same percentage to say that exploring how to do outreach is where our most courageous future lies. We also are learning that some of our pledges are up as much as 10%. But that's all with less than 20 responses coming back. So when the Tomorrow team reaches out and contacts you, please respond, check your emails and your voicemails. We're reaching out and we really do want to meet with you and hear what you have to say. But this isn't enough to really report back to you. It's sort of superficial startup information. And I really don't wanna stop any of you from expressing your thoughts or trap us in judgments about future success or failure while we are still listening to one another. But there is one thing that is worth noting that is emerging from all of the conversations, the individual ones I'm having, and the rest of the team is coming back, and that's a sense of belonging. Individuals and couples are responding to this stewardship drive with a feeling of belonging within our faith community. And so I just renamed today's service. And just with a few reports, our people are recognizing that they're feeling welcomed beyond the superficial. They're feeling known for what moves their hearts. They feel invited in and recognized for their individual wholeness. And really, that's what Bob and Barb shared with us today. Their story named their belonging first to each other and then to another congregation and eventually here. Belonging for who they are to something bigger than themselves. It's not about a fitting in kind of belonging. It's not about being the right age or skin color or gender or bank balance. It's about being embraced for who you are. And we know we're not perfect at it. We know, we know (laughs) that there's a lot of work yet to do to make sure that we are listening and seeing and experiencing one another's hearts But we can sense already that we are building belonging for tomorrow. It's what Reverend Gretchen said in our chalice lighting. We offer only this circle of trust, this human community that remembers, though imperfectly, that sings and prays, though sometimes awkwardly, this gathering that loves, though not yet enough. We're still practicing after all, she writes, still learning, still in need of help and partners, still becoming able to receive all this beauty, all these gifts. 
which we all bring. In short, we are as imperfect and beautiful a congregation as each person who belongs here. And through our belonging, we are aware, we are aware that together we are more. We are a faith community more than the sum of our parts. It's like when we sing together, and your voice, it rises up, and then it connects with the people right next to you, and then it connects with the people across the aisle, and pretty soon we're singing as a congregation, and the song is more than any one voice. When I say that I'm more aware of my own wholeness and where I belong at 51 years, it means on one hand that I'm clear about where I don't belong. I may be a member, but I don't belong to AARP. I belong here, among you. You welcome the warmth of my heart. You give me the safety to risk sharing. And together, we are giving life to a community that is far bigger than any one of us, or perhaps even all of us. It is more than the sum of us all. And that's way better than even those superb discounts. It really is. Because here there is a dependence among our hearts. And that forms the heart of a congregation. It forms the heart of a living, breathing congregation where we create freedom and life and continue to seek it and to find it together. Those boxes and those cages, they're still going to exist. Yet as we create acceptance for one another, as we sing a song greater than any single voice, we begin to create liberation for us all. And that's what it means to belong here. That's what it means to be Mountain Vista Unitarian Universalists. And belonging for today, belonging for tomorrow, And may we so live in all of our days to come. Our closing sacred song is number 404, What Gift Can We Bring? I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and share your voices with Joel's leadership. This token, 
These words can convey it, the joy of this day. When grateful we come, remembering, rejoicing, this song we now offer in honor and praise. So for our closing announcements today, as you leave our sanctuary this morning, you will find a wooden bowl in a woven basket. The bowl is for our congregation's ongoing ministries, and the woven basket is for our monthly partner, Primavera Foundation. This entire month, we'll be collecting your financial support for the Primavera Foundation, an organization which is focused on safe, affordable housing, workforce development, financial empowerment, and home ownership. So I spoke with Primavera yesterday at the same sustainability um, that we are donating to them. But I didn't really think about the fact that a lot of us have projects that we need to hire people to do. So instead of just giving them a fish with our donation, we could actually teach them to fish by hiring them to come do our projects. So I requested um, that they send us a whole bunch of magnets so we will have reminders and a phone number to contact them if we need a project completed. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. The nut butter drive update. So do you know it takes about 540 peanuts in a jar, 12 ounce jar of peanut butter? So that's a lot of peanuts. And since we, prior to this morning, we had 52 jars of nut butters, that means if they were all peanuts, we have 28,080 peanuts. <laughs> and so keep bringing them in as long as the food for tomorrow donation drive, um, all donations benefit ICS Food Bank. Thank you. Um, there is also a game day March 23rd from 2 to 4 p.m. You are cordially invited to an all ages board game day. So who says that gameplay ends when you're an adult? Not us. So this game day is geared for all those who want to play a variety of tabletop games, bring in your favorite board game and share it with friends. Um, there will be no child care. Um, so if you have children, you know, keep in mind that that might be something to, in terms of playing games, like what that's going to look like. So last day to RSVP is March 20th. Coffee. MVUU will offer fair trade coffee on the first and third Sundays of the month after service. Cafe Husto coffee at $14 a pound, and there's a dark roast, light roast, caffeinated, non-caffeinated, whole bean, and ground. There's also a half decaf, half caffeine coffee, which will, they will gladly order if there's a request. And so contact Melody Lupke if you'd like to offer to help staff the coffee table. And I hope I said your name right. And then the next one is Renew UU. So Sunday, March 24th, 31st, and April 7th. Reverend Matthew, MVU leaders will offer three sessions open to those new to MVUU. And so each Sunday will offer on a different topic. General Assembly. Oh, I have one. One more, I, do, I guess the slide didn't get in. Coming up on Tuesday, the 26th, we're doing another chill event right here. It's a lovely opportunity to come in, listen to some nice music, and sit quietly and read, study, write, do quiet crafts projects, and just in general hang out in a lovely peaceful ensemble right here, Tuesday evening, the 26th, from 6 to 8. We're working on making sure that the information gets corrected into the newsletter Tuesday evening, the 26th, 6 to 8. Oh, and after that lovely sermon, I feel obligated to also state choir practices on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. So if you'd like to add your voice to the ensemble, we're here on Wednesday evening at 6.30. Thank you, Chris. Today's Releasing the Flame is Our Work Has Just Begun by Emily Richards. Please take a moment to become present, to pause, 
and to notice how you are in this moment. Our work here today is at an end, and our work has just begun. The work of holding one another and this community in love. The work of trusting that we are on the right path. The work of believing that what connects us is stronger than what separates us. The work of engaging in that which makes us whole. The work of deeper understanding and commitment. The work of letting go of that which does not serve us. The work of radical inclusion, the work of collective liberation, the work of this beloved community. A beloved community of which we are all part. A place where we are welcomed, respected, valued, cherished. A place where we belong. Go in peace, amen, and blessed be. And to close out this morning, I need a little bit of your help. Can you all snap with me? Ah, uh, you can do a little better. Two, three, four. There we go. Now, like this. One, two, one, two. Thank uh-huh. you.